All right, well, if you're watching this video, you've probably been tasked with finding shear moment diagrams of an indeterminate beam using the moment distribution method. So that's what we're going to do here, right? And to do that, what we're going to do is follow this basic approach where we find fixed end moments, we find stiffness and distribution factors, we perform the moment distribution process, and then we go through the process of you know doing our FBDs and constructing our shear moment diagrams. And if you find this confusing, you know what? You're in good company because it is confusing, right? I I mean, it's confusing in the sense that all along we've learned one sign convention for our global, you know, sum of forces in the x and y directions, right? And we use these this this sign convention to basically find all our global reactions. And then, you know, we get a little bit trickier where we where we do some sort of like internal sign convention and we're looking at well what sides intention what size compression well well here with the moment distribution process it gets even worse because now we had a third sign convention for the moment distribution process that says anything that's clockwise is going to be positive so three different sign conventions all in one problem so yeah it gets confusing but what I want to do is try and break this down down into manageable chunks so it can cut through the confusion and help you well, whether it's on the FE or it's just on a homework problem, hopefully this will help you take the next step. So the first thing that I want to do is I just want to go through and find these fixed end moments. So I'll write that, in, write that in. And I'm also going to copy this beam down and create fixed ends. So let's do that next. And what I mean by fixed ends is, is right now, if we take a look at this, right, we know that the, the rotation right at joint A is going to be is going to be horizontal because joint A and joint C right the the, the rotation at these lo joints is going to be perfectly horizontal because we we were using an infinitely rigid support at this location but the rotation at joint B might not be right we might have some curvature that sort of does something like that well what we want to do is when we go to find our fixed end moments we're going to basically delete this roller and pretend for a minute that this section is perfectly you know restricted strained so that there's no no ability to rotate. We'll see that assumption isn't perfect, but it gets us a starting point. So let's draw that in. So to do that, I first delete this roller and I just draw in a, a kind of a rigid support symbol here, basically saying like, okay, now at joint B, we're gonna have a, a rigid joint between A and B, right? And, and then, you know, so, and then on the other side, we're also gonna have this rigid, rigid fixed end between you know B and C. So now we kind of have this problem that uh, where we end up with artificially saying we're going to have you know zero rotation at joint B. But that's our starting point. That's what we're doing when we're finding our fixed end moments. And the next thing to f actually find those fixed end moments is we're going to come in and whether you're looking at the FEA reference handbook, your textbook, we're going to have some sort of chart that tells us what those fixed end moments are. So it's going to look something like this. And that chart will basically just give you formulas that match your beam. And in this case, we now have a left side beam where we have you know, beam AB, and we have some uniform load W, and we see that WL squared is on the left and WL squared is on the right, which is what we would expect because this is a symmetric beam. All right, so I'm just gonna write that in. I'm gonna write the moment at joint A on beam AB, that's our sign, or our naming convention. It's going to equal the moment at B, at joint B, on beam AB, or BA, I'm sorry. And what this is going to do is this is just going to equal WL squared over 12. So now we can substitute in, right? So W is one kip per foot. L is 12 feet. It's going to be squared all over 12. And you can see here that our 12s cancel out. So we are left with basically just this equaling 12 kip feet. So that was an easy one to solve for to start. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look down at our point load. And in this case, A is the distance from support to the concentrated force. And B is the distance from this, this force P you know, to the support. And what we know is that in our case, A equals four feet and B equals four feet. What we're really gonna know is this is gonna be uh, joint B, this is gonna be joint C. I can change that down here. I can say, well, this is BC and this is CB. And the reason I gave it to you like this is in AB and BA terms to start is that's what you're gonna see it like in one of the reference handbooks. So in our case, we could just substitute in. And we know that uh, because this is symmetric, these different moments on the left and on the right are gonna be the same, but I'm just gonna write them out just, just for 
is it just for so you can see it so the moment of BC so at this location is going to equal P times a B squared all over L squared so our P was four kips a is four feet B is four feet that gets squared all over our total length here which is going to be eight feet and that gets squared as well. So when we do the math out, this ends up being four kip feet. We get a lot of things that cancel out and we just end up with, with four kip feet. Okay, and then likewise, the moment at CB is gonna equal P times A squared B all over L squared. And we, again, this just becomes plug and chug. So four kips times four feet squared times four feet all over eight feet squared. So this will also equal four kip feet. But when we're done, what we've done is we've just gone and solved for all of our fixed end moments. Okay, so that's kind of step one right off the bat. All right, so take a deep breath and we'll move on, right? So we'll move on. We found our fixed end moments. That's good. All right, next we want to go find the stiffness and distribution factors at the applicable joints. And typically, I mean, you can go through and find them at every single joint, but really all that I want to do is I want to kind of highlight any joint that I turned into a rigid joint. So if I turn this into a rigid joint and said, now I'm going to say that our rotation is, is, horizontal, is horizontal here, it's completely fixed, that's where I want to find my distribution factors because we know that that's not really the case, right? When we take this rigid support away, when we free this beam up, it's going to want to rotate to balance. And when it does that, we need to know, well, how much is it going to rotate? And that's what these stiffness and distribution factors are going to help us to find. So let's scroll down and, and make a placeholder for that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the stiffness and distribution factors. And what I like to do here is I like to look at the joints, again, where we had to put a fixed support. So I'm going to start with joint B, and really what I know is the stiffness factor K is going to equal 4EI over L, where the far end of that beam is either um, fixed or continuous. So let's go back up and look at our beam for a second. And if this is our beam, what we know is you know, at joint B, the far end of beam BA is fixed. So we're gonna use 4 EI over L. Same, same thing here. At joint B, the far end of beam BC is fixed. So for both, you know, the stiffness factor for BA and the stiffness factor for, for BC, they're both going to be 4 EI over L. So let's write that in. And the way that I will, I'll write that in is I'm gonna say, well, the stiffness factor at joint B on beam BA, so again, we're using that naming convention, equals 4 EI over L. And when we do this out, but I don't know what EI is, okay? But it doesn't really matter in this case because when we go to find our distribution factors, they're gonna, they're gonna cancel out. But I do know that EI is the starting point, and I do know that the length of beam AB is 12 feet. So I'm gonna put that in. Similarly for beam BC, we're gonna use for EI over L. And I don't know, again, what EI is, but I know it's constant between the two beams, and that's important. If EI is different between the two beams, you'll have to substitute more in. But in this case, it's the same. So we just get 4 EI over 8 feet, the total length of that beam. Okay, so those are our stiffness factors. That's it, right? To find our distribution factors, the distribution factors are just going to be equal to KI over the sum of k. So what this looks like is basically we get the distribution factor for BA is going to equal the stiffness factor for BA divided by the sum of all the stiffness factors at that joint. We're not looking at the whole beam, we're just looking at that joint. So this is gonna look like KBA plus KBC. And when we do this, what we essentially end up getting is we're gonna get four EI over 12 divided by, uh, what is this, 4EI over 12 plus 4EI over 8. This, so what we know is that we can cancel out the EIs because we can factor those out of the top and the bottom. And what we end up being left with is just kind of a fraction. So we can write this fraction in essentially, you know, 4 twelfths over uh, 4 twelfths plus uh, 4 eighths. And when we do this math out, we just get two fifths, okay? So that's our distribution factor for BA. Similarly, the distribution factor for BC, this is just gonna be the stiffness factor at BC all over K, 
BA plus K and BC. This is the stiffness factors, the sum of the stiffness factors at the joint. So we can do this out, and what we're gonna get here is 4EI over eight now, divided by 4EI over 12, the bottom doesn't change, plus uh, 4EI over eight. And again, what we know is we have an EI on the top and the bottom, these cancel out. So we're just left with 4 eighths divided by 4 twelfths plus 4 eighths. And when you do this out, we get 3 fifths. So those are our two distribution factors. You know, we could go ahead and look at a joint A as well, but really what we're gonna get at joint A is we have K, A, B, and we could look at this and say, well, it's 4 EI over L, but we also know that the stiffness factor at you know A on the support side is going to be essentially infinity. And, and that's because this is a rigid support, right? So this is a rigid support. It's infinitely rigid, infinite stiffness, okay? And, and what this leads us to is a distribution factor for, you know, A, distribution factor for AB, right? All we get it here is KAB divided by KAB plus infinity. Well, anything divided by infinity is just going to equal zero. Okay, and this is going to be the same thing, you know, when we go to uh, joint C. Basically, we're going to get the same type of thing, and, and we're still going to get in, a r infinitely rigid support. So the distribution factor at any infinitely rigid support is going to just be zero. Okay, so this is the case for any, you know, any rigid support. So we don't have to go through and really find all those. I mean, I could write this in just for the, the kicks of it, but you know, this is KCB, and this would also be the K, like C support. Okay, but again, they're both gonna equal infinity. We're gonna get some term on top divided by infinity, and essentially that's just gonna equal zero. So at a rigid support, we're just gonna say the distribution factor is zero. So hey, this is step two, and we're complete with that. So let's let's you know check off here. All these little successes are good things. So we found fixed end moments, we found dis stiffness and distribution factors. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do in, in the next video here is to do the moment distribution process. So you know, click the link below and keep moving on. All right. Uh, if you have comments, you know, feel free to drop them. Otherwise, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.